Foden was a British truck manufacturer that in the early 20th century was most famous for its massive steam lorries like this one here. They could be seen all over England doing various industrial needs. This one right here is not a 1922 Foden steam lorry. It's a half-scale replica. And yes, it works, fully functional. It's got a steam engine and everything. coax it just a little. There we go. We're going to let it warm up nice and slow. Open the steam to the injector, picks up the water, and you cut back on it. And it's prime. That's force feeding water into the boiler using steam. This is an exacting half-scale replica of a C-type Foden that you would have found from 1922. Everything on here is as you would have found it from a Foden built in 1922. It's just half the size. Looking at this tiny, adorable half-scale replica of an original Foden can make it difficult to imagine the scale of the original-sized Foden. This only weighs 2,400 pounds. The original one weighs six tons. And to give you a sense of scale, here's the half-scale doors. They're a little bit small. This glorious piece of automotive revivalry was built by this man right here in a matter of just a couple of months. Hi, I'm Tanner. Um, I built this engine from August 4th of 2020 to the end of December of 2020 in uh, just over five months time. Uh, because of the pandemic, I was able to work on it almost full time um, in my dinky little garage. Um, it's a mostly bolt together kit. Um, they advertise it as such, but there's some light machining involved. Uh, the milling machine got a lot of use. The lathe even got a little bit of use um, to make it run reliably and, and uh, have it be a capable performer on the road. It's named Enchantress um, after a Foden Motorworks Band march. It's, um, it's, on a, it's on a Foden Motorworks Band album from 1974 um, and I quite like uh, British brass band music so I named it after that march and that band. So your only responsibility is steering? Steering. Yep. All right. And Daddy, let me steer. Watch out. Keep your hands away. From the hot bits? Is it uh, from the motion? Okay. It yeah. will take no prisoners. There's well, supposed to be a I'm only a, a fingers width away from the from the flywheel. From the flywheel. Yeah, so yeah. Keep it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. The Foden has a compound steam engine, which means there are two cylinders, each with a different size. There's a high pressure cylinder and a low pressure cylinder. The steam first enters the high pressure cylinder, and when it's done pushing that piston down, there's still lots of energy left in the steam, but at a reduced pressure. So it transfers over to the low pressure cylinder, where it now presses down on the much larger surface area cylinder and gives the steam engine extra power from the leftover energy in the steam. And after it leaves the low pressure cylinder, then it's vented to atmosphere. This little box right here is the cylinder block. This is where their pistons are doing their chooching back and forth. These are the crosshead guides. The entire purpose of these is to keep the pistons square in the cylinders because the pistons are thin and without them they would just be wobbling around in the cylinders. And this is the crankshaft. It is a roller bearing crankshaft except for where the connecting rods connect to the crankshaft. On one end of the shaft is the flywheel and on the other end is the very simple gearbox. And this, like most steam engines, is double acting. Steam acts on both sides of the piston, so every stroke is a power stroke. All right, taking off. Dang. <laughs> okay. This is quite the experience. Oh yeah, it does drift a wee bit. So it hates potholes. Well, I can't imagine. Forget it. How about us? This is actually quite hard to steer. It's like a tractor, because it is one. The Foden has a three-speed gearbox with neutral, and because the gearbox has a total loss oiling system, you can see right into it. This is neutral. That's first. That's second. And 
That's third. All the gears are straight cut. You cannot change gears while anything is moving unless you're some sort of speed matching wizard. There is no clutch because a steam engine makes torque from zero RPM. And there is no reversing gear because it's the steam engine itself that does the reversing, kind of like an electric motor. This lever right here is the reversing lever, and through a series of complex mechanical linkages, it controls the valve events in the engine. Right now, it's in the all the way forward position, so the engine is running in the forward direction with full valve travel. If I pull back on it a little bit, it reduces the valve travel. If I pull back on it some more, it's in neutral. The valves are not doing anything. And if I pull back on it all the way back, it reverses the direction of the engine. That's why there's no reverse gear in the gearbox. It doesn't need it. It's the steam engine itself that changes direction. How do you do all of that and steer at the same time? Are you a wizard? Go ahead and get over to the right. Okay. A steam engine makes torque from zero RPM, but what happens if the piston is at top dead or bottom dead center? It can't get any leverage to push the crank in either direction. Well, that's what the simpling valve is for. Right now, the high pressure piston is at bottom dead center. So if I open the throttle, nothing happens. It's locked in place and it can't move anywhere. But the crankshaft is offset by 90 degrees. The low pressure piston can move the crankshaft. The only problem is it's run off exhaust from the high pressure piston. So if the high pressure piston isn't moving and making exhaust, then the low pressure has nothing to power it. That's what the sampling valve is for. Because if I open the sampling valve, that opens a passageway from the high pressure steam chest to the low pressure side so that the low pressure can, side can kick start the crankshaft moving and then everything can start up moving. So if I pull the sampling valve, whoa. <laughs> I can get it starting. It's a self-starting engine. Otherwise, you'd have to get out and bump start the thing forward or move the flywheel by hand if it was stuck on bottom dead or top dead center. So we're getting slow. Pull back on the lever. And I bet we crawl through it. What's the sampling valve do? It lets the jet of live steam from the high pressure side go to the low pressure side. Ah. This little bronze box right here making that lovely ratcheting sound is the mechanical lubricator for the cylinders. And yes, it is a total loss oiling system. Everything has to be oiled manually with, via these little oil pots that you see all over the engine. And all of the excess oil just gets dumped on the ground and flung absolutely everywhere. You have to constantly keep this thing oiled up. And the builder of this tells me that this mechanical lubricator box only lasts for about two miles and then you have to fill it up again. This knob right here is your parking brake. It just turns a threaded rod, which pulls up on a cable, which pulls the axle brake in the back. This is your steering tiller. This is your reversing valve, the throttle valve. This is your gear change linkages over here, some various steam controls, the injector, the ejector for the siphon. Your firebox is down here, and this is your sight glass to tell how full of water your boiler is. The Foden uses a conventional steam boiler with a firebox, boiler barrel, and a smoke box. The firebox is a box with a tube sheet on the front and stay bolts connecting to the outer skin of the boiler. It's surrounded by water, and inside of that inner box sits the fire with a firebox door that you shovel coal to. The tube sheet has tubes that run through the boiler barrel to the front tube sheet where they connect to the smoke box. Those tubes carry the exhaust gases from the fire to the smoke box where the draft produced from the engine pulls those exhaust gases through the boiler tubes and pulls air through the fire, intensifying it, creating a hotter flame, boiling more water to create more steam. Temperature and steam pressure are directly related. In this case, the hotter the fire, the more boiler pressure you will have. Standard operating pressure for the boiler is 150 to 200 PSI, but to keep it from going over 200 PSI, there's just a simple spring-loaded safety release valve that vents steam to atmosphere right here. This truck is rear-wheel drive and chain-driven, and if you can see how big the chain is on this half-scale model, imagine how massive the chain was on the full-size Foden. And surprisingly, there is a differential back here. It's not just straight drive to both wheels. To tension this massive drive chain, you move the entire axle back. There's a link rod here, and there's one on the other side, 
and you have to screw this and tighten it or loosen it to push or pull the axle back and forth. The whole axle is designed to move just to tension that chain back there. Yes. <laughs> Up front is the smoke box and two original oil lamps. These are 110 year old Lucas King of the Rolled oil lamps and yes, they do work. And the axle is a solid axle as you might expect. And one feature of the day is that it has independent wheels. That means the wheels turn on the end of the axle instead of the entire axle rotating for steering. Yes, that was a feature. The tires are solid rubber and they're vulcanized to the cast iron wheels. Later Foden's apparently did have pneumatic tires, but not this one. And the wheels are roller bearings, so you don't have to constantly lubricate the wheels. How nice. The brakes are on the rear axle only. They are mechanically actuated drum brakes. I hesitate to say drum because they're wide open. They don't look like your typical drum brake. And they're actuated by this rod right here. And of course, there is no assistance whatsoever. Only the manpower you have to press the brakes. And they're perfectly adequate for this thing, probably because it's tiny. And the absolute fastest it will go is like 18 miles an hour. <laughs> okay. Just keep us on the road. Oh, that became very difficult very quickly. I don't know what that sound was, but it was not good. Because this is a half-scale model, seating is rather suboptimal. I'm sitting on the flatbed. In the full-size real deal, this would be a solid wall, and you'd be, you know, inside the cab. But this is a dinky little thing, so I'm sitting on the ornamental flatbed. And behind me is a bent seat, which also is a coal chest. There's coal underneath this seat. Underneath me and then further back in the frame are the two water tanks, and they total 45 gallons in this half-scale model. There are two ways to fill up the water tank. Over here, you just have a copper tube sticking out. You can just pour water in there. Or, right here, is a steam siphon tube, which uses the power of steam to suck up water. You just stick this in a bucket, turn on the steam siphon valve, and it starts sucking in water. So you can rock up to your local horse trough and steal all their water to power your steam lorry. That's working quite well. This thing's like a bicycle. You don't realize what is a hill and what isn't until you drive it on this. Uh -huh. Bowden continued production long after the 1920s. In the 30s, they transitioned rather quickly to diesel-powered trucks but by 1998, Foden trucks became little more than rebranded DAF trucks, and in 2006, the Foden name died completely. And thanks again to Tanner here, first of all, for building the Enchantress, but also for inviting me out so we could all have a look at the hot, steamy action he got up to last year. 